Good morning to you. In these days of social distancing and stay at home and isolation, let me venture an important significant difference between isolation and solitude. The critical difference is in what we are forced to do and what we choose to do. And I always like to emphasize the power to choose. It is a powerful choice. During these days and weeks, we are being told to isolate ourselves from one another due to the possibility of catching the coronavirus. And the directives are aimed at our society, our safety, our health, and the health of our loved ones. The medical experts are trying their best to diminish the possibility of our catching the virus, of being sick, and the threat of death. The other word that I want to bring to our attention is the word solitude. Whereas isolation is a forced situation, solitude is a chosen attitude. In the midst of my isolation, I can choose to use my time and my mental and spiritual energy to some special purpose, which I may choose. I can read a book, an article, a magazine, or other printed material to challenge my mind or my heart or my spiritual self. I'm suggesting a both and response rather than an either or. Many of you will recall the times when the gospel writers tell about Jesus going away for a time of solitude to pray, to meditate, to put himself back together again, if you will, after some special trying time in his ministry. Solitude, as a chosen time of aloneness, can bring blessings galore and a renewed sense of God's presence in our lives. A self-chosen individual spiritual retreat, if you will, let me suggest some ways you might want to choose your, to use your time in your solitude, especially if you want to emphasize the spiritual. First, you may choose to read. There are a number of book, uh, books of daily readings available. William Barclay has two books called Daily Celebration, Volume 1, Volume 2. Father John Powell has a recent book entitled Through Seasons of the Heart. Father Powell's writings will challenge you in your spiritual growth and maturity. I like the, the questions that he asks. Let your daily reading be a springboard to meditation and growth. You can use your time to study. Few of us have plumbed the depths of Jesus' teachings, his parables, and his sermons. Choose one of the Gospels and read the verses asking yourself the question, what is Jesus trying to tell me in these words that will be helpful to my spiritual growth and maturity? Wrestle, I mean really wrestle, with Jesus' words and teachings. See if you can get some special benefit out of your wrestling match with Jesus' words. Prayer and praying is one of the key opportunities given to us as we enjoy our solitude. Pray for someone for whom you have a special concern today. Pray for that person in particular and ask God to bless that person. Don't tell God how to bless the person. God knows what that person needs. Trust God to bless the person in the way that the person needs it most. Pray for that person with whom you may be having some special problems. Tell God what you're feeling and ask God's help with your relationship. Pray for help in forgiving. If there's someone with whom you need to reconcile, ask God for help during your time of solitude. Give thanks to God for someone who has helped you in some special difficult time in your life. 
mention the person by name to God. And pray for someone who has loved you through some tough time or times in your life. During these times of isolation, deliberately choose to use your time as that of solitude, not just isolation. May God bless you in your search for spiritual growth and a special closeness with God. Use this day to come close to the source of your spiritual strength and power. Amen.